All right. Hello, Uranium friends. So um going to be a little bit off the cuff with this uh, hold on, with this uh, video today. I didn't do a lot of preparation, but uh, let's just take a look here at a couple of these names. And, you know, CCJ is pretty interesting with what occurred with the news recently. So we'll get a look at that. So right now, here is uh, U.UN, the SPUT fund. And this is a quarterly chart. So each candle is three months, obviously, right? It's a quarterly. Uh, so what happened? Well, we had a breakout with no follow through or an attempted breakout here with no follow through. And um, yeah, it pulled back all the way to this 12 EMA, but now it's kind of working its way back up. Obviously, we have good volume here as compared to the life of the fund, right? This used to be UPC. Right, Uranium Participation Corp. Back in the day, I think our good friend uh, Kevin Brambo was uh, involved in this back there. But regardless of that, here's where we are chart-wise. Okay, we have a failed breakout, and it's come back, and it did make a lower low, but it still is in an uptrend here. So if we zoom into this quarterly candles here. Uh, it's just making a good move up, right? So that's where we're at at the moment. Let's get to the monthly because we can get a little bit of a deeper picture. So we're zooming in now. Now we have our fibs from our last uh, drawdown, shall we say, okay? So this is your Fibonacci retracement here. Now it has bumped its head against this golden pocket. Again, we're going to talk about the golden pocket a lot because the golden pocket seems to dictate a lot of things, okay? So there's a reason why it's called the golden pocket. So it can act as support and it can act as resistance. So it's obvious here that this month and this month, and now here we are again testing it. So it's acted as resistance twice. We kind of have a little bit of a triple top here and we're making a push through this golden pocket early in the month. Low volume, tough to make an assessment there on a monthly chart. We'll, 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 when we zoom in closer to the weekly and the daily, we'll see what it, it holds for us. But here, if we come over here, we look at this volume profile. We've kind of made it through a lot of the chop, a lot of the uh, supply zones. So we're kind of moving up into, again, I talk about these air pockets a lot. I don't, it doesn't dictate everything, but it's it's nice to see it, right? So we're kind of moving up into this air pocket here where we could see a nice little move, you know, if everything is in our favor, right? So we have this um, general market malaise that we are in. Uh, you know, I don't know if this bounce was the definition of the bottom. and We don't know. We'll have to see. But that's where we are in a monthly. It's looking pretty good. It's got to get some follow through on this breakout here so we can just get through this essentially triple top and work its way up well ideally what we'd like to see is that we get up maybe hit the 78 percent retracement and then we get a back test and then we see how it, it handles itself over at this level so this level is becoming pretty important okay so that's where we're at with that let's get zoom into the weekly here and we have yeah, I mean it's the same deal. We're just fighting this 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 area of contention here. You see, there's multiple taps here at this level, at this seventeen twenty five level, right? We've kind of gotten through it. It's the highest close we've had in quite some time, which is pretty cool, right? I mean, we're we're getting there. Increased volume. We have uh, the down day, the down weeks are lower volumes, and the the up weeks are higher volumes. It's it's kind of kind of stuff you want to see. We like to see that. All right, so we had, somebody pointed this out on Twitter. I don't even know who it is. I, I would give the person credit, but I don't know who it was. But we do have an inverse head and shoulders look going on here. Just do this, right? So you have your shoulder, your head, and your other shoulder here. So, yeah, my drawing is horrendous. I, I know I get it, but uh, you get it. So that's what it is. So we kind of have the inverse head and shoulders and those are always nice little reversal patterns if they follow through. We need follow through. I mean, we're kind of just going in this area right here. We're going to fight this area. We get through it. You know, maybe we can expect a back test on it and hope that the back test holds, you know, because look, there was a time here where we got through this pretty hefty resistance level. Back test didn't hold. 
it kind of overshot it a little bit, but it, it got right back through. So we're, we're hoping that we see uh, the same type of action. Okay, so the daily is good. Look at this volume. It's increasing. This is beautiful volume. And we're above the 200-day moving average. Good stuff. Again, just contending with this level. So our key level is our 1725. Let's just call it 1730. All right. If you want to really get nuts, so you could call it 1740 because that's the definition here on this pocket. But that's where we're at with this one. Not bad. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Cameco, CCJ. All right. Here's our quarterly chart. It's the life of this. Um, life of this name is right here. So again, it's the same type of deal, right? So we have this area where it kind of broke out of and then just failed to get any follow through. And now we're getting this back test of this area right here, right? So this seems to be, you know, we were talking about this in the Uranium channel over at Chart Guys. Well, I was talking about it. And, uh, you know, you, you look at the lifetime of this name, right? And if we take off all of our indicators and Nothing that can cloud our vision. You can just kind of see that this is the level, right? So the world is kind of valuing this stock kind of right at this level. Yeah, it is overshoots to the upside, to the downside. But our main area where this thing likes to trade over the life of this stock is kind of in this area, right? So the 18, uh, yeah, like the 18 to 22 area, yeah. So we're kind of back testing that, right? We put these indicators back on. Okay, so that's where we are. That's the quarterly. The quarterly looks fine. We did have this little breakout. We back testing now. We have to see where it goes. But you know, we've had some significant news for CCJ, and you know, there's mixed feelings about it. There's people who would prefer to see them just as a pure play miner. There's people who say that this. Uh, Acquisition is very creative, and they probably they might have stolen Westinghouse. Who knows, right? It's uh, it's for greater minds than mine. I look at charts. The charts have all the data inside the candles, right? They these this, all your data is here inside the candle. Now it's not specific to any one event, especially when you start looking at three month candles. But the data is here. The sentiment is here. The trading is here. It's all in these candles. So that's kind of why I, I I like to keep charts in front of me okay so we're looking at the monthly uh we've had some let's get a little bit closer here let me get this one thing out of the way yeah so the monthly it breached right it breached this 2338 this low from um what is this august yeah so it breached that low but it quickly got back over so that's a good sign we're still we're still holding a monthly uptrend, but we are in monthly consolidation at the moment because it is, you know, we technically were in con monthly consolidation when it when it broke down twenty four sixty nine. What is this level here? Twenty four sixty six. I mean, that's really when monthly consolidation absolutely started. So, I mean, we're there. We're still in the uptrend. We still have this monthly low triple bottom situation at 2002. We've talked about this level for a while. That is like the key, key, key level for us. Uh, we do not want to see that break. Uh, judging by the action today, maybe it won't. I don't know. None of us know. The broad market, again, you know, we have major, major market headwinds across the globe. You know, and uranium is holding up extremely well through all of this. Actually, it's been it's been very strong. So does that hold forever or does uh, contagion still hop in and and take our precious uranium uh, investments into the toilet? Who knows? I, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that question. So we're here on a weekly. We know what happened here. They made this acquisition, um, you know this is the way I'm looking at this name at the moment. And, you know, you can listen to the fundamental guys because, you know, they study this stuff. I kind of look at the charts and here, here's what the deal is. Okay. So the deal was what? I forget the, the exact number of what it was, but I just rounded it off. So you have a fundamental uh, support level, a floor, if you will, of 22 bucks because, you know, someone was willing to, some institutional guy, guys, whomever, were willing to drop 
what is it, six hundred fifty million so far into this thing for at twenty two dollars a share or twenty one seventy six or tw whatever the actual number was. I don't have it off the top of my head, but you get the idea. Okay, so there's a fundamental floor at twenty two, and we've hit it, and we're tapping it, and we're kind of holding on to it right now. So now, what, what else is there? There's a technical floor, and it's at twenty bucks. Right, so we have this technical floor. We've had all of these hits and taps right around twenty bucks. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the the fundamental floor at twenty two bucks, and I'm looking at the technical floor at twenty bucks. And I'm saying to myself, this is the spot. And then, like we we went back to this three month uh, to this quarterly chart, we looked at the life of this stock. Well, we can kind of see that this is the area where. It's been bouncing off support there. It's been bumping its head off the resistance there. It's been bouncing off the support again. So it's kind of, it all kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, I mean, that's, that's where it is for me at the moment. That's what I'm looking at. I just know that if 20 bucks breaks down, <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to be a good deal, you know, because then we have to reassess and then we have to start looking at what's our next support areas. I mean, 18, obviously, is a spot that we can look to for support, but then you're going to be looking at 15. Don't know if that happens. I don't make that prediction. OK, so I'm kind of like a price action guy. So we have a wait and see kind of approach with that. Uh, daily, we've lost the 200 day moving average, which was. One of those positives that we were always, uh, that I was always looking at, right? So you want to, you know, it's never a good sign when you lose that. So we're going to have some work to do. Uh, let me just stretch this out a little bit, make it make it look better. Um, yeah, we're going to have some work to do <coughs> to get back up there because this is this point of control here. It's a pretty big volume shelf right here. And now we're back, you know, in that historical lifetime of the stock range and uh we're gonna need to get out of here really quick so hopefully that's exactly what happens you know if this thing keeps slogging around and the general markets start uh not cooperating um who knows you know there could be a lot of pressure uh highest volume day let's see let's see if it was ever i'm gonna say it was ever Yeah, so the most volume we have ever seen in this name traded yesterday by a landslide, right? And, you know, if this volume bar didn't exist, well, guess what? This up volume bar was is, is pretty high up there, too. So some recovery volume today, some recovery price action. You know, who knows? I don't know, even know if they're done filling this order. You know, uh, yesterday when I was watching the tape, I mean, you could just see that order get filled right around this 2240 area. Actually, you could just see it chopping around in there. And it's like the market makers are just trying to fill that order. And does it get going after that, after they fill this order? Or is this order filling really acting as support? Or is it acting as resistance? Don't know. We're going to have to see what the price action tells us. But that's where we're at. You know, it's daily oversold doesn't really hit that level very often it can go lower i mean it hit it in may 2022 we had a pretty oversold route there you know uh but we're kind of at the rsi levels that ccj doesn't really stick around down here too long right so you know another point in our favor for some upward action so if you get some cooperation from the markets for the next couple of days maybe at least until like monday or tuesday hey maybe we'll be okay I, I i don't know you know the price action is i can tell you that i've added uh to my long-term positions down here definitely i always tend to buy uh when institutions buy and if i can get their number uh i like it even better and the other thing i like about this deal which i have not seen yet and someone can correct me if i'm wrong but I didn't see any warrants attached to the deal, which is really a positive thing because warrants, usually what happens with these private placements, a lot of these investors will purchase the units and they'll come with a, a warrant or a half a warrant and they'll come with a share, whatever it is. 
And what they'll do is they'll sell the shares, you know, or they'll short also. And the, they'll sell the shares and they'll try to keep the warrants for free. It's usually how it goes. But without that warrant overhang that we're having right now uh, in a lot of other deals, um, it could be good as far as um, less pressure on the stock as far as the action is concerned. Okay, UEC. Again, another uh, another bunch that just uh, these guys just did a deal, and honestly, you know, I don't know. Fundamentally, I don't know much about the Rough Rider mine. Personally, uh, I just know that Rio Tinto has been trying to divest themselves of uranium in general for quite some time. So, yeah, they took a big hit on this uh, on this mine as far as what they paid for it and whatnot, but. You know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's good for UEC. Maybe it's not. But still, it's UEC did it with all cash in stock. They didn't even do any financing. They didn't have to sell any warrants or do or anything like that. So for them, you know, for a stockholder, not a bad deal. Okay. So here's the quarterly chart, and same deal. And we're gonna, it's it's in monthly consolidation. Uh, it's still holding. Well, I'm sorry, quarterly consolidation at the moment. You know, uh, nice little uptrend. Nothing horrible, right? Again, we are at that, here was this breakout area, right? So it broke out from the 2012 areas, right? Broke out, broke out of that level, came back with the back test, and it's, you know, it kind of undercut it a little bit. But, you know, it's at least it's holding this red line, which is the 12 EMA. So it's not horrible. You know, the 5 EMA is really acting as our guide at the moment. It's kind of riding that. So let's see if I can get you tighter in. So yeah, this yellow line, the 5 EMA, it's just riding as a guide. We still have this 200-day moving average to contend with, and but it's right there. So let's take a look at the monthly and see what we got going on. Yeah, so the monthly is... At the moment, it's putting in an inside bar, which is still in an uptrend that won't be lost. So we're just in consolidation right now. Uh, it's getting tight. It's got a little bit of an EQ going on, but you know the key level here is this double bottom. I'm going to mark it right now. I'll mark it with this red line. This little double bottom we have at 292. You know that's the spot. Right. So. Weekly EQ, you know, I mean, it had this nice little uptrend going, lost it, you know, and now it's just going to be chopping about. So nice hammer it's putting in this week. That's good to see. It has some increased volume. Uh, don't get caught up on the red candle all the time. I mean, it's, yes, it's down for the week, but it's, hovering near its opening so it's it's not horrible uh let's hope that this is the weekly uh higher low as opposed to this number so i guess really short term this is where we want to really make sure we hold 318 short term we want to hold 318 let's look at the daily yeah nice little recovery today on the daily. I mean it had the same deal here. It's really just chopping about. This is just traders getting just playing their little games in between this range and you know, I've talked about this range already, you know. It's really it's 3 let's just say it's 350. You got a little bit of a double bottom here. So even if we move this up here like if uh, fibs get out of here. Uh. So even if we move this up here You know, 345 is your short, short-term level that you really want to hold. I mean, that's what we're kind of looking at. We'd like to break over 416. If we can do that, you got a, uh, we, we keep the daily uptrend, right? So here's your low, here's your high, higher low, higher high. Now we're kind of just searching for the higher low and hoping that this is it. You know, this this is kind of the spot, right? So there's a little bit of a make or break going on with UEC as far as the technicals are concerned. URNM quarterly. Just let me kill these things for a second. So here's your quarterly chart. You know, if I was to 
it's kind of it's it's tough to to look at this one like this because it doesn't have that much data involved but it's enough for you to say hey this is a great little nice little uptrend we've got going right so there's nothing that's confirmed yet that we have a quarterly uptrend right so we've just kind of made this one move up we peaked out and we're coming back down to retest this low right here which is uh, let's say what is it 5033 and you have a quarterly double bottom at 54 bucks so I mean, that's where it stands with this bad boy right now. All right. Not a lot of data on this thing, which is a little tough to, to deal with. But I mean, if you really want to look at the monthly now, let's just say you had your move up, right? You found your higher low. Actually, you had your move up. You found your higher low. You had your move up again, confirming your monthly uptrend. Uh, you've held your monthly uptrend on this pivot. And then you went into an EQ. And then we just lost that monthly uptrend here, right? So I'm hoping that you guys can kind of get this, but uh, let me just see if I can do this without this stupid thing coming. All right, so up, higher low, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low. Okay, so that's when you've lost your trend. Goodbye. So we've lost our trend and now we're kind of in an EQ. So it's just chopping around right now, sideways, sideways action. Not horrible, not great. It's a great uh, ETF. It's volatile as heck. The option chain kind of sucks on it. It's tough to play uh, the calls with it. Uh, some guys have been finding out. We have been talking about that. So, okay. Uh, where are we? Weekly. All right. So the fibs are on again. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the same deal, right? We've just had, we had this little breakout and we had no follow through. We retested, we lost it. And now we're back down here and we're still in an EQ. I mean, technically we're kind of holding this weekly uptrend. So 61 loses it and it's been defended one, two, three, four times so far on the weekly. So uh, let me just get rid of this thing too. Sorry. So that's where we're at. Okay. We just need to, it would be nice to get over this weekly high here. Uh, 7068 is our spot that we want to kind of make our way through, but we still have the golden pocket to contend with. And we still have this chop zone. With all this volume, okay, all this price action where it's rejected a bunch of times, you know, you can these things start to obviously line up. It's a good thing about TA is that things come into confluence, all right. But we have the uh, we're still below the 200 day moving average as well, but it kind of makes sense, right? Because URNM has a lot of, um, shall we say, junkers in it or <laughs> lower grade uranium mining companies or smaller market cap stuff, so. You know, that's going to put pressure on it. Uh, daily made a nice move today. It wiped out two daily resistances and one candle. Uh, the volume is good. We have increasing volume. And we're testing the 12 EMA, this red line from the underside, right? So as you can see, once we've lost this 12 EMA, it has been our resistance, right? These things, these these EMAs, uh, especially in the uranium space, I mean, they love to ride these EMAs. So, uh, and they ride them from up top, and they ride them from below. So we're kind of we need to just get through that uh, convincingly. I mean, you got through it here, but we didn't get any follow through, right? So you can just start to see in price action. Just pay attention to this stuff, right? So when you tap, 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 and it doesn't make it. You know, it's gonna, you, you got to start thinking that there could be some weakness to follow through, right? So, good thing is, is that all of our down days, except this one, but most of our red volume is less than our green. So, that's always a good sign. So, you could always have the people that are, you know, buying 100 shares and then make getting a two, three, four, five dollar move on of it and selling 50 shares. You know, that's how they, that's how people build positions. 
especially in the retail end, right? So that's how you do it. And it comes back down and you hit you hit it for another 100 shares. You hold 150 shares, makes another run like this. You sell another 50 shares. Now you're holding uh, 100 shares with a cost basis, you know, stuff like this. So that's what's going on there. It looks fine, um, but we are, we're fighting this 12 EMA. Global Atomic, I know you guys like this one. Uh, quarterly chart, it looks okay, right? I mean, if you look at this quarterly chart all by itself and you'd say, hey, it looks fine. You know, the volume is coming down, right? We've had our volume climax up here. The volume is waning a bit, so that could be concerning. But again, the broad market's volume is waning as well. So it's obviously going to be something that's going to affect our stocks no matter what. Monthly chart. Uh, yeah, we've kind of lost our uptrend. And we're just kind of EQing right now. So really what we need to do is we just don't want to lose that 258 area. Now this is, I'm looking at Global Atomic on the TSX. I'm not looking at the... Um, the U.S. ticker. I try to do the mother countries for some of these Canadians, especially because, you know, they just inherently have more volume. So you probably get some better data here. These F tickers are usually just representative of what's going on in on the, the mother exchange. So, yeah, I mean, we need to see on this monthly, that's our resistance is 440. Is that 440? 441. That's our resistance. And um, you know, it's putting in a little bit of a it it's regained this twelve EMA, so now it's just riding it. I mean, it's been riding it for the past couple of months, which is good, right? So it was acting as resistance here. Right? This is all resistance for it. Now it's acting as support. So that's it's a nice little sign. So not too horrible there. We're half the month and well, we're not necessarily fully half the month, but we will be next week, so you know, we're a little bit less than half of the volume that's been going on lately. So, but again, you see good up volume on the up days, you know, increasing volume. This was a little rough, a little capitulatory there. Maybe hopefully we'll see. Let's see what the week looks like. <clears throat> yeah. So this is what we talk about nested time frames, and this, that's what you got. You have a little bit of a weekly uptrend inside of a monthly EQ which is, it's not horrible. I mean, just, so now what we do is our key level now, really, is 326, right? That's kind of what we want to do to hold. And we could still technically hold our uh, weekly uptrend. This is like trip bot. We could technically hold our weekly uptrend, even if we get down to 292 area. Uh, but you don't want to see that. We'd rather see this, okay? We're riding the 12 EMA still. Uh, we've gotten above the 200 day, so another good sign. You know, so it's it doesn't look horrible. The volume is fine. Uh, yeah, so it's let's just hope that this is the higher low and that we can make a move and get up through this high up here, this 441. But I suspect that we'll kind of do something like this on this weekly. You know, maybe you get a little bit more of a run out of this. You know, maybe run into some resistance there, pull back. Of course, this is in the way. Uh, pull back and then maybe do something like that. You know, so as long as we maintain this up, if we keep getting weekly higher lows, yeah, that's what we want at this point. So get after it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daily. Yeah, it looks like this higher low is going to be set here. I mean, we don't necessarily, I mean, it's just a double top. It's so close to, right? Yeah, I mean, this thing literally double top to the penny, didn't it? 85? 85. So we double top to the penny right now after today. So it would be nice if we could get over that, and then we can kind of can still confirm that we are still in this little daily uptrend. Otherwise, we're just going to be EQing right now. So we'll see how that plays out. Let's run some quick quick fibs on this thing just to see where we stand on this whole mess here. It's probably a long video. 
Yeah, so we're 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 bumping up against this fifty percent retracement of this down thrusted move. So yeah, not bad. Let's see what happens. I mean, fifty percent usually can end up being a little bit of a um, contention area, but we do have this volume profile over here that's you know it wanes here. I mean, all the strength is down here. It's gotten through that, so we could be chopping around up here into this golden pocket. But you know, it's not horrible right now. I mean, you're starting to get some good. Uh, buying pressure. Look, so you got the volume. It's good volume, good good volume, good good buying pressure here. Okay, so all these dips are being met with buys. Uh, it's been that way for a while. We like it. You know, most of these people that are trading this thing, it just know that when it gets down into this zone, they're gonna they're gonna buy. You know, everybody likes this company. It seems to be one of the best fundamentally. Uh, we'll see. Encore. Quarterly charts. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Uh, let me take these fibs off for a minute. I have to kill them. Kill the fibs. Kill the fibs. So Encore is. I just want to run a real just to get an idea. I don't think it is. I think we have we've lost our potential here. Yeah. So if we pull this fib on this quarterly, uh, we've kind of lost the bull flag look. I mean, it, it's it's still there, but you know, once you start breaking through this 38, 50% retracement on this, on that move, the bull flag becomes less likely. So it's there conceptually, but, you know, pure, pure technical analysis says that it's less likely that it's going to hold. But the good thing is on this quarterly is that we've had some taps of this 12 EMA, and that's kind of holding. It is a little bit of a squeeze here. So you see when these EMAs start to squeeze into each other, you know, it just becomes a fight, and obviously, right? So it looks like we we could have an inside bar for this quarter. Who knows? But, um, yeah, there's a little bit of some chop going on here, and it could be that way for a while. Uh, the monthly is in. Uh, confirmed downtrend, yeah. so. I mean, our key level right now for Encore is 285. Again, this is uh, Canadian. 285 is our spot. You got earnings coming up when? Uh, November 30th. So, And uh, all these EMAs and the moving averages here are kind of acting as resistance. We're below the 200-day. Not the best look. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me just... We'll just do some fibs on this... On this last, we'll take it from here. I'm going to take it from here. So this fib pull here, I mean, this thing, it's fighting just to even get through the 38% retracement. So uh, it's been a little bit of a dog lately, right? I mean, everybody's saying that the reverse split, they're talking about going to the NASDAQ listing. You know, definitely seen that movie before in other sectors. Um, so... You know, who knows? Maybe they do get the listing. I, I don't know. But the reverse split, you know, most traders do not like or investors or retail people, whatever you want to call them, they don't like reverse splits. And it usually ends up uh, causing some selling pressure, which we obviously we have seen here. All right. So but again, we're fighting this right now. We're, we're fighting the 38 percent retracement, but we did get up to that golden pocket. So. You're probably going to hear a lot of these golden pockets coming out of my mouth for however long I do these videos because they kind of have some importance. Uh, yeah, so daily, it's just, again, it, now it's fighting this 12 EMA, right? So it's just fighting it. It's acting as resistance. It got above. It didn't do much, no follow through, right? And now we're back. So, and every time that it hits this 12 EMA, it's met with selling. Um, today, that did not happen. So, slight character change, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it could be. You know, you've had your ramping up of volume, and maybe that's kind of waning now. So, maybe we can start to see some green volume ramping up for a little bit. But, you know, the key level. 386, right? 386, 384, and 307. Those are our key levels here. So that's kind of what we're watching to see which way it breaks. 
So that's all this thing is doing. It's going sideways. So there's a lot of traders or technical analysts, whatever you want to do, they're going to wait for this sideways action to resolve. They don't care which way. They just want to know which way it's going to go. So does it resolve down? Does it resolve up? Who knows? All right. So that's it. It was a long video. I was unprepared. Uh, so do with it what you want. Throw it in the garbage or maybe get something out of it. But uh, over and out.